Um, Allah upon dear friends, uh, it's such a, a pleasure to see you again. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, you remember some of the uh, stories of the past because somehow they may be connected. As if you remember, uh, I mentioned how we got the, um, uh, we, um, uh, the land was bought and then how we got the, uh, the approval of the government and uh, so on. And uh, in um, uh, 1977, during a conference uh, for uh, uh, International Women Conference in Delhi, Amatul Baharui Khanum was in Delhi and at that occasion, House of Justice decided that we put the lay, uh, uh, we lay the foundation stone of the temple. And that was done, and uh, Khanum uh, was there with many uh, wonderful ladies, and uh, their husbands also were allowed to participate. Some, some of them, but they had to stay. They had to uh, sit on the balcony. So, <laughs> so uh, we had the. But that event was very historical, very wonderful. Uh, at that time, I was 29 years old. Uh, when I started, I was 26 from when we started to apply and all of that. And then by that time, I was 29. The gentleman that you see in this photograph is a wonderful scholar, one of the greatest uh, Baha'i uh, uh, believers, uh, one of the Baha'i uh, Indian believers, Mr. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, he... Uh, uh, he was counselor of, uh, of India at that time, and uh, he spoke Persian so beautifully, Professor Kianra. He spoke Persian so beautifully. And just uh, when Ayatollah Rafsanjani visited Iran, visited India, um, Mr. Kemani, Mr. Uh, uh, Kianra, and uh, Mr. Ramnik Shah, the secretary of the National Assembly, they met him. And they said uh, to me, uh, they told me that how uh, he spoke about the, um, uh, how he spoke about the, um, uh, you know, the problems of the Baha'is of Iran, they were talking about it. And uh, Mr. Kianra, um, and uh, Rafsanjani was telling that uh, he, he quoted from Quran that, uh, um, 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 din, uh, the, the religion is uh, Islam. And uh, Mr. Kionra continued in Arabic the, the rest of the uh, chapter in which uh, Muhammad says that uh, um, my religion for me and your religion for you. So that means everybody can have their own religion. Uh, he said it in, uh, in Arabic, and Mr. Rafsanjani was so shocked that a Hindu, uh, with such, uh, uh, you know, that Hindus, they don't uh, at all uh, recognize Islam in a way, and as Muslims, they consider Hindus as uh, uh, untouchables. Uh, but then he was so shocked to see that Mr. Kianra, uh, uh, just because he's a Baha'i, he has such a vast knowledge of Quran and knows it by heart. Anyhow, that was not the story of us tonight. Um, we, uh, now, this 29-year-old boy, uh, I went to India, and I wanted to hang the bell around the neck of the cat. You have, you have heard that story that the, all of the, uh, the, the, the mice, they got together and they said, we have to take care of the cat. This is really uh, troubling us. We, we cannot have life, what we should do. And one of them came with a brilliant idea. He said, we will get a bell and we hang over the neck of the cat. And then wherever he goes, the, the, it will ring and we all escape. He said, it's a wonderful idea. So they got the bell, but then they said, oh my God, now who is going to hang the bell around the neck of the cat? because that's the major problem. So that is the uh, uh, in, uh, saying in Persian uh, that uh, really was relevant for me. Now I had gone with all of those uh, visions and all of those things that 
we spoke. I've gone to India, and uh, I am right at the heart of the uh, uh, the country and reality. I'm facing the reality, and uh, I want to um, build the most complicated geometry. You can see this building. Everything is curved. When you uh, want to build something like that, there are, in fact, the, in the interior dome, the inner inner dome here is a, a intersection of, a, a, of a, um, 18 sphere going through each other. And uh, so imagine that they tell you, because when you are going to build a building, what you do, you draw the lines on the, flo on the um, floor and uh, go, then go straight up and you reach to go three meters up and you reach to the ceiling and so on. Uh, but when you have a building that is all curved, you want to build a sphere with a center in space, that means X, Y, Z, so and so, the center of a sphere, radius of a sphere is this much. Now we want to, uh, uh, this sphere to cross another sphere with the center point of A, uh, X, Y, Z, and with uh, such and such radius, and they want to go to cross each other. Now you build it. It's very, very complicated. This is one of the most complicated geometry. And all of the people that I knew, this is just the interior dome. Imagine these, these, these surfaces. Each one of them is a sphere. They are going to each other and they cut each other and they create this shape. Now, and this is supposed to be white. This is exact picture of the completed dome that uh, the, later on was recognized as the best concrete of the world. Uh, by Cement Concrete Association of uh, United States and England. Um, and uh, white exposed concrete, shell structure that had never been achieved in the world before or after of this size. It's, it, so we want to build this and that kind of complicated geometry, uh, the, the, the geometry that 30 years later, it, yeah, it is introduced on the cover of the American scientist as the cutting edge of the technology, of, uh, of concrete technology. And uh, AutoCAD used its picture on the, this, on the cover of their book, uh, although even I, I have never used AutoCAD in this building. We have never used AutoCAD. It's all done by hand, but it's uh, used on the cover of the AutoCAD for, for that. And Prime Minister of India now, just last year, introduced that as the greatest success of the Indian technology on the cover of the India Source High, that is a report of, that the government has produced for them. Now, this kind of job wants to be built by these tools, equipments, that belongs to 10th century ago. These tools that I show you here, they are all exact tools that we have bought from the labors at site, and now it is in the museum that we have at the temple. It's there at the information center. You can see this is a drill with the rope that you play like an a, a instrument, and it makes a hole. Each hole takes a, I don't know, half an hour to, to drill a hole, especially if you want to drill a hole in a stone or in a concrete. Anyhow, uh, uh, this, this is the type of plum and level and gunia that uh, are going to achieve that uh, perfection that is plus minus three millimeter in the maximum overall of a structure. The shells that you saw in the design has that kind of uh, uh, that kind of accuracy and geometry. So you can imagine that really, and we want to do, use this instrument and these labors. This is a, this is a photograph of the labors at the site. These are, the women are carrying uh, loads and uh, their, their husbands uh, that are either carpenter or something, they are working in, in the same place. Sometimes three generation, uh, the child and the mother and their grandmother, they are working all of them together in one site. And you can see that 
they are pouring concrete with the equipment. This is the equipment that has produced that white concrete. Exactly this machine has produced that white concrete that has won the best concrete of the world as far as uh, uh, um, strength and as far as quality is concerned. And this uh, equipment, this mixer, you cannot find today in museums. Uh, even in the in United States, you cannot find it anywhere. It's just uh, ancient things. So now, with those equipment, we want to achieve that geometry with these labors, that they are farmers, they are villagers, and they speak 10 different languages in the same construction site. Um, now, of course, uh, you can imagine that this was really a serious problem. Uh, let me uh, unshare my, uh, my screen so that we can, um, now it's, uh, so I can see you better. Uh, I don't know why I don't have it. Uh, okay, yes. Um, so, um, uh, so now, uh, imagine that uh, all of these complications that I mentioned uh, made our life miserable for the first two and a half year of structure that we were doing foundation. Then we were pouring, uh, uh, we wanted to solve the problem of the geometry, formwork and technology. It was so difficult. Unfortunately, the contractor, our contractor, because was very concerned about this, this geometry and things that in England and in United States, very, very distinguished uh, um, uh, and Canada, the distinguished architects and engineers would tell, uh, would tell me that it is impossible to build. Uh, um, this contractor was very nervous. And uh, um, because of that, they brought their very, the oldest, most experienced engineers. And of course, when I say most ex experienced, that means an engineer that for 20 years, 30 years have poured concrete and has made structures in India. But what quality, what technology, what, it's nowhere near what we want to do. And because they are old and experienced, they believe that they know what they want to do and they don't know. And whatever I was telling them that for God's sake, we need young, crazy, full of ideas, new uh, uh, people to do it. And uh, in fact, uh, I will tell you late, when we finished this building, Arthur Erickson, that was the most famous Canadian architect. And today even is considered father of the uh, modern uh, architecture in, in Canada. Um, he's pro he's uh, the Embassy of Canada in Washington, D.C. is one of his masterpieces. He has done, I mean, our Canadian friends like Bill seems that they are on the line. They can tell you that at every corner of Toronto and also Vancouver, you will find a auditorium, a hall, a beautiful building done by uh, Arthur Erickson. And he has won several awards for concrete quality. So he knows concrete. When he saw this building at the end of uh, construction, he came there, he saw the building and I was talking to him. And uh, then he came to my office and I offered him a coffee, we were talking. He said, he wrote in our book that this building is the proof that still in this time, miracle can happen. And then um, um, he told me, <laughs> he very leisurely told me that Mr. Saba, you know why I think you could achieve this quality in this place that nobody has achieved it anywhere in the world. He said, I think no one in this whole construction had experience because if you had experience, you would not dare to do it. Anyhow, and he's very right. That's why I wanted complete non-experience, but full of energy and crazy engineers that they can understand what I want and they are ready to do something that nobody has ever done before. Anyhow, now, um, so it was the, co the contractor, so there is, they were pouring concrete, I would reject, 
you have to demolish it once, twice, three times, ten times. There is no progress. People are tense. Everything is difficult. At the same time, very poor quality of management by contractor. At the same time, uh, lots of injustice and unfairness to the workers, to the laborers. They are working uh, over time. They don't get um, uh, extra uh, wages. Sometimes even they don't get their own wages. And they are complaining. They come to me and they say, Mr. Sabat, they're cheating us. They don't give us our money. And I go and completely complain and do and that. Nobody listens to me. And anyhow, all of these things together, at the same time, political issue of India that I told you that the government of the um, constantly, we have two parties in India, Congress and uh, Bharata Janata Party, that they are um, um, fighting with each other. And one comes to power, the other one goes, the other one comes back, this one goes. And constantly to undermine each other, they create unrest and, uh, and strikes in the, in the country. And if there is one thing that Indians have learned from British, the two, they have learned two things, in my opinion, from British. Number one is to carry an umbrella, even to protect them from sun. But the, I don't know what umbrella can do in India. I mean, the, the not, it's of no use whatsoever. But because British, they carried umbrella, they carried umbrella. Second one, I mean, I used to carry umbrella when I went to India, but after a few weeks, a few rains, I noticed that this umbrella doesn't do anything because rain in India sometimes comes from bottom to top. It doesn't come from up down. It just, it's just so heavy. So I put the, the umbrella aside because you, I am wet anyhow. So what umbrella is doing? Another thing that they have learned from British is labor union and the strikes. It's constantly you have strike and they uh, shout and you can see demonstration. Zindabad, Murdabad, they say, which is Persian, but they say in these Indians, they use that. And they, um, they have a strike. So suddenly, uh, with the influence of all of these things together, we had a labor strike. Now, we, have, we are in the most critical situation in, uh, in, uh, in our time. Uh, uh, imagine that uh, I am really, uh, first of all, the building is half, all of the building is wood. I don't know, it says, uh, sorry, I lost my screen because somebody uh, eats something. It says, um, do you hear me, Behnam? I was trying, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, sorry, because my, my I lost my, my uh, view. Um, Please um, share your screen again. I think yes, I'm fine. There's... Do Do you see me right now? Yeah, I can. Okay. I can see you on the side. I don't see you in the front. Okay. Anyhow, now um, so it's uh, um, so uh, really um, uh, we we have half of the all of the building is built by wood because we have made the formworks, but not yet concrete. Everything is formwork, structure, everything temporary structures, wood, wood, wood. 60,000 cubic feet of wood has been used in the structure right now, there, and it can, in heat of India, it can, it's like a, a matchbox. One flame, it put everything to the sky, it's burned, and everything is lost. Millions of uh, really rupees will be, will be destroyed. And the temple, uh, construction will stop permanently because you have a, such a mess that uh, we, we have to go to court to settle down with the, with the contractor and all of that. And court cases sometimes takes 20 years in India, 20 years. And uh, the contractor that have uh, the, the old uh, engineers of the contractor that they are uh, familiar with these things, they want to use this as a force majeure because if they claim force majeure, everything will go to an emergency situation and nobody is going to understand what they have done, what kind of mistakes they have done and all of that. And they think that because in any case, they know that they cannot build the building. So they want to create that kind of mess. 
and what should I do? As one side, I ask from the House of Justice, please pray for me. House of Justice is asking me, they tell me, Mr. Sabo, explain a little bit. I want to know, we want to know, uh, what is your problem? <laughs> I told them several times, I said, please pray for me. It's so complicated that if I want to explain it, it takes weeks of writing communications. Just pray for me. And um, this, um, uh, at, at the same time, this wood is, at the same time, we are informed by the, in the parliament of India, um, a, a, par, uh, a member of parliament and announced and warned that 2000 revolutionary guard has come from Iran in order to damage Baha'i institutions and functions in India. And the police is recommending that I should, uh, they, they should put a bodyguard for me and then I should not go to the temple regularly on certain time. I have to go all of these things. And so what we are going to do at the same time with all of that wood there, all you need is $20. You pay $20, which is a fortune for an Indian beggar and tell him that this building is for Muslims or um, for the, 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 I don't know, uh, coffers or um, enemies of Hindu religion and uh, give him one drum of uh, oil and he will put everything, set the, everything to fire. What can I do? So I was really uh, uh, worried about it. We, we, uh, uh, they knew that uh, um, we are, uh, 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 we are worried about them. They knew that I'm constantly complaining about their injustice to them. We would give them warm clothing uh, as a uh, do donation uh, during the winter, this, that. We had established a school for their children. We had all of these things. So they knew that we are, uh, we are their friend and their fight is with the, with the contractor. Uh, and because of that, they would allow me every day. I would go with my car, they would open the road and we, I would go to my room and uh, they would send tea and coffee for me. Uh, and, but the minute any of engineers of a contractor would come to temple, they would break his leg. I mean, they were throwing the stone, this, that. It was a catastrophe, what we are going to do. Now, one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, and time is, gold for us and everything is going like that and the wood in that heat and that rain is twisting and cracking and it was a catastrophe. What should I do? And at the same time, I knew that in India, if there is any problem, you have to go to prime minister. Nobody below the prime minister will do anything. Bureaucratic, bureaucracy is like that. So you have to do. So I go to, to the local, um, management of the contractor. They say, this is force majeure. We cannot do anything, Mr. Sabo. You don't know about the problem. This is political. This is this, this is that. I go to the regional management. They say the same thing. They say all is in the hand of the local people. And I knew that there is a central, um, uh, there is a headquarter of, the, of this company because this company is huge, multi-million dollar company. Uh, not in construction only. The construction part is small, but they are doing cement, um, steel industry, this and that, very big. So I uh, was, uh, they told me that um, uh, there is one president in, uh, in Madras, but I tried to get hold of him, contact him, always typical answer from the secretary that uh, the president is not dealing with these things and he is, the everything, this is completely a local matter and a regional matter. So you have to talk to region. So what can I do? And I, I found that the name of this, this gentleman is Mr. C. R. Ramakrishnan. Um, Mr. If you know, in, in, if you are Indian, the minute you say your name, everybody knows everything about you because your name will say from which caste you are, are you from Brahman, that is highest, or you are the lowest 
Harijans or you are in between, if they give you, give you your name, even they will tell you with who, with which kind of names you can marry. Everything is everything is decided. And was your, I gotta interrupt you. Do, are you touching or something? Do you have a pen or something that you're clicking? No, my hand is <laughs> clear. Anyhow, sorry, uh, I. I don't know. I, it's not me. The clicking noise coming from you. Anyhow, um, it's uh, so uh, this uh, um, just remind me what I was telling you. <laughs> uh, um, you were talking about the individuals with the last names and how important they might be and how hierarchical from last name you can. Yes, from name. So when you, when you hear the name of a person is Rama Krishna, that means there is names from the top rank of Hindu background. Um, so he was a very distinguished man. He was equal to a minister of industry of India. Very good. But he couldn't meet, he would not accept to meet us and all of that. So and we had a friend, Mr. Soli Sorabji, that later on became Solicitor General of India, wonderful uh, lawyer, very high quality. Everybody said that if he defends someone, the judge will be nervous uh, because he was, he, and he was a very, he, he uh, loved the temple and he was very supportive. Um, so I asked him, I said, Mr. Solabi, I know that I, you are not, because he was in field of, uh, um, um, constitution and the government, because of that he became uh, sol sol Solicitor General. Uh, but, and this is a, a business matter. I said, I know that you are not, I don't want you to deal with this matter, but I just want to ask you to send a letter and ask to this president and ask for an appointment for me. I was sure that by seeing his name, they will take everything very seriously. Anyhow, he was kind, he wrote that letter, and he said that. I, a letter came, he said that, Mr. Ramakrishna said that, um, although I have already communicated with Mr. Sahaba and I've told him that this matter is beyond me and it's not at all in my hand. Uh, however, as Mr. Sorabji is asking for appointment, I have 15 minutes uh, and such and such day, I will be in Bombay in our regional office and Mr. Sahaba can come and meet me. But it's only 15 minutes because I have between two meetings. So what can I do? I said, okay, it's better than nothing. But in 15 minutes, I really needed a three hours meeting to solve, to tell all of these things. I want to tell the, this gentleman that is such an important person, such an important manager of huge company, like a minister. I want to tell him that I am a 20, at that time, 30 years old man with no, a foreigner, not Indian. And uh, uh, I have come to your country telling you that your management is bad. Your people, your, many of your engineers are corrupt and the whole system is not functioning. Oh, this is how you're going to do this. And you went through, so it was really a very, very difficult situation. I decided to request Mr. Shah, uh, Ramnik Shah, Secretary of the National Assembly. He is now passed away. He's a wonderful, dedicated Baha'i for 40 years um, in the administration and a very Baha'i administration and very, very dedicated man. But he didn't know anything technical. So he said that, but his name is pure Indian. He's from Jain background that rarely any Jain uh, will accept any religion other than Jain religion. And it was a miracle that he has become Baha'i. And also Mrs. Uh, Zina Khanum, Zina Sorabji, the uh, counselor of India. And that was uh, also a very distinguished lady, daughter of Mr. and Dr. and Mrs. Fozdar, very, uh, uh, both of them, Knight of Baha'u'llah. And uh, very, very, uh, uh, she herself also was counselor. And so I said, uh, uh, if you can come with me so that there are some Indian faces with me, I'm not alone. They agreed, they said, we come, but you know that we cannot, we don't know anything about this subject. We are just going to sit there. I said, yes, just, you are 
right representative of the client. You are my client. National Assembly is um, owner of the temple. So you are my client. And he's, so we went there. We went there. On the way, we were talking. And we were very depressed, all three of us. What we are going to do? What we are going to say? What we have to say? It's so difficult. We don't have time in 15 minutes. I'm not a person that uh, is constantly, I, I did not, I always, my mother always said anything, any problem she would say, say a prayer, say a prayer. And I thought that this is an old attitude. Old people, they constantly, they want to pray and trust, they, they want to put the responsibility on shoulder of God. They say, you do it. Well, we are supposed to do everything ourselves and uh, that's it. So, uh, but that day I was so helpless that I said to my friends, I said, what do you think if we say a prayer at the beginning of the meeting? Both of them, they looked at me. Well, of course, we can say a prayer, but we have 15 minutes, five minutes gone. And uh, who goes to a meeting with such big businessmen and say a prayer? These are not religious people. They are pure, tough, and rough businessmen. But we said, we said, no, no. Really, we don't have much to do. Let us do it. So we went. We went there and we went to the meeting and we went to a big, big building, huge building in the most expensive part of Bombay. That is the most expensive property in the world. For your information, search for it. The most expensive properties of the world are in Bombay. You are not in Tokyo. You are not in New York. You are in Bombay because of the uh, population and crowd and all of that. Um, and uh, so we went to this building, majestic, huge building. We went up in such and such floor and we went to a, they guide us to a conference room. I had never seen such huge conference room. It looks like a table with almost, I don't know, 50 or 100 people. You can, they can sit around it. It's so long. You see that and loudspeakers and, and beautiful photographs of industrial industries of India, cement plants and, and steel plants and so on and some buildings all over the hall. Huge. I was young. Keep your microphone away from the zipper. They're hitting one another and making a lot of noise. Sorry. Um, anyhow, um, this, uh, um, no, uh, you see microphone is here. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, uh, this, um, um, I, uh, um, yes. So we, we went to this conference room. We sat there like some lost <laughs> ships, <laughs> three people small at the corner of this huge table with this huge room. We are sitting and um, uh, really so nervous. We sat there and we were all really down. Door opened, Mr. C. R. Ramakrishnan, a tall man, quite big in, at the, in his 60s at that time, age, um, came in together with 15, 20 men, all black ties and um, um, their bags and their Samsonites and all of these files under their thing. They came in, they said, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And they sat on the other side of the desk. They sat on the, at the edge of their chair as if, okay, tell me what you want, I want to go. Mr. Ramakrishna immediately told me, told us that it, you're welcome. Uh, you know, this, this entourage is not for you. We are going to another meeting. So I just came on the way to listen to you and we are in hurry, we are going, please tell us what you want to do. So <laughs> now uh, I said, <laughs> Mr. Shah and Mrs. Sorabji left it to me because it was so embarrassing to say, you know, then, so I said, you know, Mr. C. R. Ramakrishnan, we are designing and building a temple. This is a, you're all a, this religious organization and we are doing something in the name of God. It is our tradition. 
in the Baha'i faith that we start our meeting with a prayer. Do you mind if we say a prayer at the beginning? Hmm? He looked at us as if, you know, there are all sorts of idiots. Uh, you want to waste your time, waste your time, do it, say a prayer. And we had decided on the way we had decided, I asked Mr. Swarabji to say this prayer that I love, uh, the one that it says, I lay all my affair in thy hand. Uh, I will no longer be sorrowful, sorrowful and grieve, grieve uh, nor uh, will I let trouble harass me and so on and so um, so, And Zina Khanum is a wonderful uh, reader with perfect English. So she said this prayer so nicely and gently as if we have all the time of the world. Five minutes gone, meet the prayer finished. But as she was saying the prayer, believe me, I swear to God that I noticed that these people, all of them, as if they knelt down in their seat, their chairs, they sat back in their chair and they really, they were listening with such, with such attention. And I really felt that we are becoming bigger and bigger in this room and the room is becoming smaller and smaller because we are just at the end of the prayer, we were absolutely in command, sitting there. And Mr. Sia Ramakrishnan, after a few seconds of silence, he said, what was this? What was this? I had never heard such powerful words. What is this? Mr. Sorabji explained that this is a prayer from Abdul Baha. Uh, we always, Baha'is always start their prayers with the word of God asking for his confirmation. Uh, and he said, yes, yeah. tell me, what can I do for you? I started like a machine. Now I have 10 minutes and I ran and I said everything about, you know, this is such a project, it's so exceptional, it's so important, it's going to be a part of history, it will go to your name, it will be the headline in India, it will create this and that, and you need people with talent, with ideas, with feeling, and the people that you have are not like that, they are old, they have built, for years and years they have used some technology that they are stuck with it, they are not prepared to do any risk. They are not doing, and they are not fair to do your labor. They are cheating your labor. They are not paying money to them. They are, your laborers are good people, but they are stuck with this situation and so on and so on. I went like a machine and half an hour I spoke, then I stopped. I stopped. Now, Mr. C. R. Ramakrishnan is already 20 minutes late. He said, he looked at his people, not to me. He said, this is different. This is different from what I had heard. Then he said to me, Mr. Sabah, you know that I have a meeting and I have to go. Uh, we are already late. But I will ask three of my senior people, he named them. He said, these three to sit in this meeting with you. I, my meeting will be finished in the afternoon. After that meeting, I will come back. I want, then he said to those three people, he said, we are going to build this building. Find a way. Don't look for excuses. I will come back. Then he left. Believe me. My God. What is this? I mean, I thought, I said, Ya Baha'u'llah, nothing on earth other than this prayer could do this miracle. Nothing. He would not listen to one word that I said. If it was not Baha'u'llah, if it was not the word of Abdul Baha, opened he, the door of his heart, opened it. And he gave us recognition, gave us voice. Anyhow, 
he left. He left and the meeting, we went on and on. One of the people that were in the meeting was a young man, uh, not young, maybe in his uh, 40s. Um, uh, in the name of Mr. A. Ramakrishna. She, he was C.R. Ramakrishnan. This was A. Ramakrishna. He was a joint general manager, management level four from the top, if you go from the chairman to president to this to that, number four. He was one of them and there, there was, uh, I will show them your, their photograph later, you will see. Uh, and uh, uh, there were two others that they were more, one of them uh, technician, technical, Mr. Naharoy, a very uh, strong engineer from uh, IIT, Indian Institute of Technology of Madras. And uh, another one, uh, another one uh, from the business line. And they were all, we, we sat and we negotiated all of the details, all the problems. They said they cannot work with these laborers. They have beaten them and they have uh, insulted them and this and that. I said, I can manage the labor. You leave the labor to me. I will negotiate with them. They respect me. I will convince them. They said they can, we cannot work with them. They have to go. I said, I will convince them to go, but they have to get all of their dues, all of the money that they, they had been cheated, they had, not been, they had not received. They have to get all of their money and I will ask them to go. With friendship, they will go. They said, okay, if you do this and we will talk all of these things. During the discussion we were talking, this Mr. A. Ramakrishna, the young man, was constantly feeding me with some very valuable information. He would come when I was pouring tea somewhere at the corner of the room. He would come to me and say that, you know, don't emphasize on this subject. Work on that subject. Do, do this, do that. It was very helpful. Anyhow, we sat and then in the afternoon, Mr. Ram, C.R. Ramakrishna came, came and said, what you have done? He said this, this, this. They said that we have to get three engineers. They mentioned the name. They said the three engineers that they are the best. Young, young, all of them graduate from Indian Institute of Technology, which is Indian Institute of Technology is the most recognized university in the world by Harvard University. I mean, it just, they can, they are, anyone graduated from that university is uh, brilliant. And it's a miracle to go to that university. So uh, they said these people will come and this and that. Mr. Ramakrishna told me that I will come myself every few months to see what is the progress. And Mr. Saba, you are supposed to work like one of my people. You are our team. You are not on the other side. You are in my team. You tell them what to do, they will do. That is it. We came out. We were so happy, so happy. Three of us, we were crazy. We didn't know what to do. How we could do this. This was a miracle. This happened. Anyhow, um, then let me show you the, uh, the picture of these people. Oh, I forgot to show you this. You see, when I said the building was, uh, um, ah. I don't know what is this. Oh, sorry. Um, I wish I was like Behnam that knows everything about computer. Um, okay. Um, Yes, you see, this is the dome. It's all wood. What will happen? By the way, I came and talked to my laborers. I told them that this building is in danger. They have come to, from Iran to burn it. They told me, the labor that they were on a strike. They said, Mr. Saba, from tonight, we are going to guard this dome. No one ever will be able to do that. No one, and they did it. They were on shift. They were guarding the dome. Look at the amount of wood. This is inside the dome. This is the ladder that we go up to the top of the dome, to the top of the, this is all supporting the structure. 
Now, these are the two, these are the team that later on they came. This gentleman here is Mr. Ganguly. He is just an angel, just an angel. And this man is the most genius engineer I have ever seen, Mr. Raju, Raju. And these two, at, this is right uh, at that time, maybe three years after, the four years, this is now concrete is on. It's about four years after that day that I'm talking to you. Uh, they came there. These are such a gems you don't know. They are so good. They love the temple today. They are so precious. They came to the 25th anniversary. For the Mr. Ganguly is, himself is from Brahman caste, from the top caste of Hinduism. And for the wedding of his own daughter, he chose the temple, the Baha'i temple for the wedding. They came all, they got the permission, they came there. And both of them, they became number one in, after the construction of the temple, they became number one in the rank of engineers and technology in India. And for years and years, they served uh, uh, this company at the top rank. Now, these are the people that we spoke to. This is Mr. E. Ramakrishna many years later. This is many, many years later. I told you at that time he was young. I was also young, you remember? I was 32 years old. This gentleman was about 40 years old. Now here it looks I am almost 60 something. So he's that one. And this is that Mr. Ganguly that is old, the same young man that was standing there. And this is Mr. Naharoy, a genius engineer of, uh, that has calculated all of that, that temporary structure structure that support that door. Now, I, this is what I want to tell you. Uh, I have 10 more minutes to, to, to uh, come down to these things. Um, then we were going out of that meeting with my friends after that negotiation from, Madra, uh, from Bombay, Mr. C. R. Ramakrishnan and others. I sh when I was shooking hand with Mr. A. Ramakrishna that you see him here with this gentleman, Unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago, although he was not old. But he was a magnificent man. He dedicated, and I will tell you later. Anyhow, when I was going out, I shook his hand. And I told him, Mr. Ramakrishna, I have no doubt that you will be blessed by Baha'u'llah. You and your family will be blessed by Baha'u'llah because today you supported us. And really, his support meant a lot, did a lot. Uh, for Mr. C. R. Ramakrishna. Anyhow, uh, I mentioned that and we went. That's it. And then, anyhow, uh, after that, every few months, Mr. C. R. Ramakrishna came with his entourage of 10 cars at the back, behind him. He would come with private airplane to, in, to Delhi. He would come with that entourage to the temple. He would come to my room direct and said, Mr. Saba, are you happy? Everything. And I was, believe me, we, I was working with them constantly like one of their engineers. I was telling them what to do, they would do. If I would say don't do it, they wouldn't do it. That's it. And we work, all of that, all of this. Uh, um, then we, uh, uh, then I, uh, here I have to mention that this gentleman also here, this photograph that you see, this man is Kamal Fozdar. He's a very young, he was, when he came to temple, he was about 22 years old. And he had graduated from England. He's a, a son of Mr. John Fosdar, counselor of Malaysia and Knight of Baha'u'llah for Malaysia for years. And he came to as volunteer, as a young man to, to, to temple and uh, worked very dedicatedly as young man with me uh, for years, 10 years, almost at, at the temple, not 10 years, sorry, sorry. S six years he was in India. Uh, uh, or seven years in India. And after that, when he went to England, but when I was in Haifa, again, I invited him. He came to Haifa to help me. He's a magnificent Baha'i also from Fosdar family, that all of them, they have three counselors, six Knights of Baha'u'llah in one family. And uh, Mrs. Shirin Fosdar is a hero of the Baha'i faith. Anyhow, um, so um, this, uh, uh, we, um, we, um, so then temple was built, temple was built, and in the inauguration of the temple, Mr. C. R. Ramakrishnan himself, 
participated in the con in the conference in the prayer meeting sat at the uh, at the first row and next to Amat al Baharu Yekhanum um, when we said all the prayer and he was crying at the time of meditation he was crying and when he came out he said he has never been in a spiritual meeting so spiritual in a meeting so spiritual this is the first experience in his life that experience he uh, was there and anyhow he was chairman of the uh, this company for years and then he passed away he retired and he passed away when he retired the committee, the committee's people, the, the people voted, and they chose instead of rank number one, they chose Mr. Erama Krishna that is here as his pres as president to replace him. That was rank number four, so he was really recognized so much, mainly because of the achievement of the Temple of India. He became up, and he was he went became president and. For years he was working with such, uh, he was so in love with the temple. Every often, whenever he would come to, to India, to, temp, to Delhi, he would come to visit the temple. He uh, introduced a film, uh, if not introduced, uh, in, uh, um, um, produced, produced a film for the temple. And he made that famous sign, huge sign on the, ring road of london that says picture of the temple and it says taj mahal of the 20th century that is his work and many other things many other things he did one of these visits that i went to india later on uh, many many years after this is about i'm talking about maybe 10 years ago and years after dedication of the temple um, perhaps i was I was in Haifa, from Haifa I went there. When I was there um, in India, uh, he called and he said he wants to meet me from Madras. He called and he said that um, he wants to meet me. And I said, I would be delighted to meet you. Uh, if you are you visiting Delhi? He said, yes, I will come. Again, with his private airplane with an entourage of four or five, he, latest model of, I don't know, Mercedes-Benz or and, uh, whatever, they came to the temple, they came to the meeting, I was there, they talked to me and they said lots of things. And when we were going out, they were, I was saying goodbye, he waited a bit till all of the friends, all of his colleagues, they left. Then he took my hand, he shook my hand and he said, Mr. Saba, do you remember you told me that me and my family will be blessed by Baha'u'llah. I have come to tell you that we have been blessed. That is the reason I wanted to meet you. That was it. And our story of tonight is finished.